matchup so close they can taste it. Welcome back, Road to Indy race fans. If you're here with us live on the broadcast, you're about to make history as Indy Lights embarks on a doubleheader weekend <laughs> on an oval. I'm here with Rob Howden, the Series Development Director. Rob, what can we expect from race two? Well, obviously, race one was quite interesting. We had some issue with the tires, as we know. Uh, unforeseen issues in terms of excessive tire wear. And what is the crazy part about it was significant testing happened with all the teams a week beforehand. Higher temperatures, even more laps than they ran yesterday. But there was some tire issues. So we're going to try something a bit different here for race number two. Two different segments of racing, 35 laps apiece. We'll bring them in. They'll change right side tires and they're going to ref, uh, refill up the fuel as well. We're trying to keep, keep the fuel low, uh, load a little lower. Interesting to try to take care of the tires for this race. So not only are we making history with a double header, but we're making history, I think this is the first time ever yep. that I've seen an Indy Lights race is a mandatory pit stop well, to refuel and yeah. to put on right side tires. So to give some fans a little foresight into why it's refueling as well, because normally you wouldn't see that. Even no. in practice, teams and tracks in particular are very uh, specific that they don't want us refueling on pit lane because if you spill in pit yeah, lane, we don't have it the rigs. eats yeah. away the pavement. It's, yeah, this is unforeseen for us. But Cooper Tires has said, hey, look, guys, the weight of the car, it was interesting. Nobody that came and tested here ran full tanks. Yeah when they did it. And this is interesting. I would say 50-50, the teams I've raced for, we either test on a full tank or not. Now, I'm a pretty light guy. What that means is, is uh, generally we're using ballast for fuel. Yeah. <laughs> so usually my cars are always fueled up pretty high because okay. we're using- You need that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need it. I was really surprised sitting in on the Indy Lights drivers meeting this morning that the teams all owned up and said, hey, we've never run a full race tank of fuel in our testing. We always ran like half intriguing race. Intriguing for sure. Yeah. It is intriguing. So. They made the executive decision to say, hey, guys, we're going to go only a half tank of fuel so that uh, we actually refuel at that stoppage point 35 minutes into the race. And we have basically two sprint races. Obviously, they're only paying points at the end, so it's not like NASCAR stage racing. It's we're only giving yeah. points to the guys at the end. But as we've saw, it's restarts, intriguing, I think. It's going to be cool. It is cool. Yeah. I'm excited. And it's going to be interesting, I think. Restarts here yeah. are about the most exciting yeah. thing you could see. So. Well, we, we get the green. It's going to be this big run. See what you can do in those first 35 laps. Can you make a move? They're not allowed to do anything to their cars at all during the stop. That's one thing to say. If your car's pushing, it's going to keep pushing. You can change tire pressure when you make the, t the move to the tires. Now, fresh uh, scuffed in, not fresh right side tires. In our morning warm-up, every team had to run at least three laps at speed to scuff those tires in to keep the balance once they do put tires on. But you can go new tires, new scuffed tires all the way around, but you got to go to the tail of the field. I'm not sure anybody's going to do that. But interesting, I'm sure there's some teams in here that have toyed with it. And especially if you're on that kind of, I'm fifth place back. Yeah. I don't know. Might be worth the gamble. True enough. Uh, but the big thing, obviously, is going to be the fact that uh, Kyle Kirkwood is now going to start in the pole position. We saw in that qualifying session uh, with two laps, one for race one, one for race two. Malukas had the fastest lap for race one. Kirkwood's going to make the move to the inside. He'll be the driver that's able to get out front. Uh, a tiny lead, two points over, over David Malukas coming into this race. Fairly interesting, something that uh, you don't see too often, but I've heard it uh, talk with Johnny Unser, race director here on the road, Tandy, and he specifically said that Indy Lights was a tough race yesterday. He did not like what was going on in the racecraft that happened. Okay. And he, he made a point to bring out the Kirkwood incident. You know, we saw Kirkwood get into the back of Lundquist mm -hmm. yesterday. It looked like a Streets of St. Petersburg race. It did not look like an oval race. And they were uh, pretty strict in the Indy Pro 2000 drivers meeting regarding the Indy Lights okay. drivers meeting. So I would say Kirkwood's got a bit of a red flag on him right now going. A spotlight. A little spotlight. Well, first and foremost, remember Kirkwood's big, huge save coming out of turn number two. I think he was trying to pinch it down to get a good run. The car got away from him, and that was, I think, a massive save. Couldn't believe he held onto it. Yeah, uh, yeah I, well, thought, I, I thought he was going to the wall. I hope he had an extra change of shorts for today. <laughs> That's right. Uh, those were dirty. And then the run out of two that Parker's talking about almost got into the wall. I thought he got in the wall. I called it the wall, but when we Steve Wick and I looked at it, literally an inch away from the wall, maybe even just maybe a graze, but he got such a good run out of the corner. That's when he made the contact with the back of, of Linus Lundquist. And Linus, luckily, he didn't go around because he was 
cranked sideways too. Completely. Yeah. And you know, these cars are set up to go left. They're That's not right. set up to go right. So when you see Linus Lundquist opposite Locke going right into the wall, huge save on his part. Yeah. And you know what? I want to bring this up. Obviously, we saw Linus get taken out yesterday with the incident. But at the same time, for a European to come over here and adapt to the oval as quick as he has, I think that is a huge spotlight, and I think IndyCar teams are watching that. Yeah, right out of the gate, running P3, very, very strong there. In fact, uh, was making some moves to kind of work his way forward. The great thing about Linus now, we talked about that incident into the safer barriers of turn number three, a pretty hard impact, serious damage to the race car. Kudos to HMD Motorsports and the Global Racing Group. They were able to pull the car of Nikita Lastiskin, the number 59 that he ran throughout the entire season. They got that car dialed in. It takes some time to get the setup dialed in for an oval race a much different of course approach to the balance of the race car they got that done all morning and got him out on the, on the track for for morning warm-up but if i'm a driver i would much rather be on a team that rolls a backup car off the truck than for me to take the guy or the car that i just hit in the wall that's true <laughs> that's true i enough. uh yeah you know oval cars you'll find the biggest thing with them is confidence for a driver and if a driver doubts the confidence of a car going into a race that can play into it. And another thing that's awesome, he got a warm-up before he had to Very go true. back out. I was just going to say, can you imagine if he had got that wreck and had to go right into turn number one or, and, and turn number three at full song? I think that might have played with his mind a little bit. One of the big things about Linus, though, we know he's a championship driver. We know he knows how to win races. So we got to expect that he's going to come out here and be strong right out of the gate. So, Rob, we always do this. I beat you yesterday. You and did. I'm going to be real you honest did. about that. What's your predictions today? I'm saying Kyle Kirkwood from the pole. <laughs> I just I just don't think that – I think if he gets out front, I think he's got the speed. The only thing that held him back, he tried twice to make the move for the lead. It just didn't stick for him. Had he been able to get that done, I think he might have been able to pull away from Malukas. So I'm going to go – it's easy to go for the pole center, but I'm going to go with Kirkwood. Man, okay. Well, I mean, it's easy to go for off pole too. That's but it. you know what? We'll, we'll keep it the same this weekend. Right. We'll have to reconvene in uh, <laughs> New Jersey Motorsports Park. I'll go with David Malukas. I think if he gets a good jump – I think he'll be in the shot. But where I think he'll make his move, I think I'll call it out right on the broadcast on that restart halfway. Oh, segment two. In segment two, All I right. think you will see David Malukas make the move into the lead. This guy thinks he knows something. So, Rob, I know you got to get running off I to do. the booth. He's got about of a – well, if he didn't have a golf cart, it would be probably a 15-minute run driver over intro, there. Driver intros on pit lane and I think, uh, about 15 minutes, not even that. Without being said, let's get to know a driver in Indy Lights a little bit better, one of the phenoms from uh, England. Let's throw it to Toby Sowery. Don't go away anywhere, though. We're coming up Indy Lights Race 2 here at Worldwide Technology Raceway. For our next driver profile on the road to Indy, I am bringing you a racer's racer. Toby Sowery, driver of an Indy Lights car. Toby, how did you get your start in racing? Just for fun. I think like a lot of sports, you just, uh, you know, you attend an event, so birthday party for my instance, and then just pursue it. You know, you snowball into some sports, some others you don't like, you fall out. But uh, for racing, it was just a karting party as a baby growing up, and then here we are. Very interesting. So, karting, how did that career go? Haha, <laughs> hastily. It was up and down, you know, we never had the big budgets to go to Europe, to World Finals, but all the British stuff that we did, it was competitive. We went with some big teams, some factory teams, so I think I had a lot of success, but not enough for, for my desire. Well, maybe not a lot of karting success, but moved to 2014, you won the British MSV F3 Cup. In 2015, you were the MRF Challenge winner, is that correct, in Dubai? So immediate success in cars, and then most recently 2019, finishing third in the Indy Lights Championship. Toby, what brought you to the road to Indy? A lot of factors, you know, there's a reward system out here, which we don't have in Europe. Um, so they actually reward progress and, and uh, success. So that was one of the main factors. We got a few phone calls that were out of the blue, um, looking to bring other European drivers over as, you know, it wasn't as big as it is now. So. There was a few factors, but the sun, the shine, um, the girls, the beaches, the drinks, all of that sort of stuff, <laughs> but the racing, obviously. This is your first year living in the US. I know in 2019, you stayed over here for a, an extended period of time, but first year based in Indianapolis. How's that went? It's going good. Um, the weather's a bit up and down. I've got some trouble with my roommate here and there, but I'm actually enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. I didn't know what to expect, but so far it's been a really good experience. Oh, that's awesome. It's good to have you in the US. Now I have to ask, a lot of the fans have been telling me about uh, your, your nickname on social media, the Wellstone Raider. Can you please describe to us where that came from and how it uh, how it's developed? Well, you know, Sam. Hi. You know, Sam. 
Well, you to play well, wouldn't you? Yeah, you want to play well. Uh, it was just a bit of a joke starting off. Um, you know, you bring some English culture over, um, and then there's, there's this famous character called the Wellstone Raider, um, who kind of aggressively goes at another fan just for calling him out, and he was, the term is, you want some, I'll give you some. And it just kind of stuck, you know? I got a nickname from it, and they've not stopped telling me that. Well, as we saw at Indianapolis GP, the other drivers wanted some, and you were giving it to them. So that was fantastic. Toby, thanks for coming uh, not only to the U.S. with us, but thanks for racing here on the road to Indy with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Here is a bit of wisdom from your Uncle Cooper. Tires exist on a spectrum. On one end, you got too much tire. On the other, you don't get enough. Both ends are rip-offs. You're either paying for more than you need or needing more even after you pay. So if you want a tire that costs what tires should cost and does what tires should do, go right for the sweet spot. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! and motorsport enthusiasts. Lucas Oil School of Racing is America's number one formula car race school. Enjoy modern paddle shifters, pit speed limiter, and onboard video along with integrated data systems. Get started today with our two-day basic or advanced course. Lucas Oil School of Racing is the official school of the road to Indy. We can also qualify you for your SCCA license. Get started today by visiting us at www.lucasraceschool.com. With over 40 years in business, High Tide Boat Lifts is committed to elevating your craft. Whether you own a personal watercraft or a large yacht, we can design and create the perfect lift for your needs. At High Tide Boat Lifts, we understand that you've worked hard to get to a successful place in life. We'll ensure you have a hassle-free experience, maximizing the time you spend on your boat with family and friends, and supporting your dreams out on the open water. As your uncle, I want you to know that on the road of life, there will be rough spots, and they will chew up your tires. I recently took a road trip to Greensville to attend the chili cook-off. Rough roads all the way down. I drove there on these Cooper Discoverer and Duramax tires. You know, they're made with the durability of off-road tires, but for on-road driving. Without them, we might never know the winning bean-to-meat ratio of a good chili. And those are the things in life, my friend, worth driving towards. So go with the Coopers. Cooper! I'm hungry now.
think the best way to get to the bottom of how Cooper Tires is activating in the road, Tindy, is to talk with the guy running the show, the development manager, Gavin Johnson. This guy's smart, he designs the tires. Gavin, take me through the process of, you have a tire on the racetrack, now you're putting it on the streets. Yeah, the objectives are obviously quite different. However, the technology is shared to some degree. The material science that we gain an understanding of on the racetrack transfers very nicely to the uh, technology that we have to implement for our road products. That is fantastic. Describe to us how different the tires are from USF 2000 to Indy Lights, and then we can maybe talk about the street tire too to give the fans some insight. Yeah, sure. The, the whole program is a development series. It's, we're, we're teaching drivers, we're teaching team personnel, we're teaching engineers the art of running a race car and driving a race car. Therefore, the design philosophy uh, at, the, at the very lowest level of the US F2000s is to give a very consistent, very stable platform on which the driver can learn. They can make mistakes, they can recover from those mistakes and not be punished by, by the tyre dropping off or uh, falling out of a window. Likewise, from an engineering perspective, we can make changes to the car and we can we can gauge a positive or a negative response without it being masked by, by massive tire degradation. And then taking that to the streets, obviously our tire, you need it to last because if it doesn't get to the end of a 30 lap race, it's going to be tough to get 100,000 miles out of it. Take me through the technology specifically that you learn on the road, Tindy, back to the street cars. There's, there's, um, the, the great thing about a motorsport program such as this is is that behind the scenes we are able to do an enormous amount of uh, simulation and testing. And during that process um, you, you have the opportunity to evaluate a huge array of uh, potential materials uh, that, that you wouldn't necessarily even consider if you weren't given the opportunity to, to rapidly develop and test product. That feeds through to our, to our road tire development in a very positive manner. Well, that is a great end to it. It's great to have everybody involved in motorsports and we thank you for all your work uh, you. on making our tires last as race car drivers. That means a lot to us. <laughs>
Tail of the field, row number six on the outside. Robert McGinnis from Andretti Autosport in the number 27, starting in the, tw uh, the 12th position. Tapped the wall a little bit during qualifying on the second lap. It'll be a tough road to hoe for him working his way back forward, but watch for the Mount Kisco New York driver coming from 27th. Inside of that row, row number six, starting in the 11th spot. Out of Louisiana for Carlin Racing, the rookie Christian Bogle in the number seven. Up now to row number five into the top 10. Single car family run team, Antonio Saravalli out of Ontario, Canada in the number 11, starting in the 10th position. Inside of row number five, starting in fourth from Payette, Idaho, last year's Indy Pro 2000 champion for Hunkos Hollinger racing the rookie Stingray Rob in the number two. Row number four now, starting seventh and eighth on the outside from Australia in the Blundstone machine for Carlin Racing, former FIA Formula 3 driver Alex Peroni making his second start. Of course, a doubleheader here, second start on the oval for Carlin, the rookie Peroni in the number five, starting eighth. Inside of that row, a driver who won here last year in Indy Pro 2000, made the jump up to Indy Lights, Devlin DeFrancesco with a new sponsor on the car as well, Jones Soda out of Washington alongside Power Tap and Kamoa, a number of the sponsors on board with Devlin DeFrancesco. Not hard to miss that car in the racetrack, that brilliant yellow. DeFrancesco in the 17 for Andretti Steinbrenner Autosports starting in the seventh position. Moving now to row number three on the outside. Another one of the drivers from Hunkos Hollinger Racing out of the UK. Toby Sowery, his second year in the series in the number 51. Sowery starting in the sixth position. Inside of that row, P5, the driver who ended the race yesterday in the wall up in turn number three. He's put that behind him. The HMD Motorsports team have given him a new car. They pulled out the number 59, got it set up, and that will be Linus Lundquist, the rookie in the number 26, starting in the fifth position. We'll go now to row number two on the outside. Driver who has had a really good run here midseason. Benjamin Peterson out of Denmark in the number 24 for Global Racing Group with HMD Motorsports. Peterson Peterson starting in the fourth spot, and alongside him, a driver with a bunch of poles here in the stretch run, Daniel Frost out of Singapore in the Andretti Autosport Denjet sponsored number 68. Frost looking for his first Indy Lights victory, a former winner in the Oval here on the road to Indy, Frost, and that's 68 starting in the third spot. 12 drivers in the field, two will occupy the front row as they come out of turn number four to go green. On the outside, the driver who has now won five races, including the first end of the doubleheader yesterday out of Chicago, Illinois for HMD Motorsports. The outside front row starter, the number 79 of David Malukas. Driver up front right now who starts on the pole position, best lap, best second lap in qualifying. Puts him on the pole here. He has won five of the last seven races from Jupiter, Florida, in the Andretti Autosport machine, former USF 2000 champion, former Indy Pro 2000 champion, and your current point leader here in Indy Lights, the pole sitter number 28, Kyle Kirkwood. So Kirkwood and Malukas on row one, Frost and Peterson on row two, Lundquist and Sowery, row three, DeFrancesco and Peroni on row number four, row five will see Rob and Saravalli, and row six will be Bogle and McGinnis. Just a couple of minutes away before we fire up these 450 horsepower engines to get these drivers rolling for a two-segment race. 35 laps for the first segment. They'll come in, make those tire changes, fuel back up, and we'll send them back out for a final 35 laps to see who comes away as the winner of race number two here at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Take the opportunity to say hello to those of you tuning in on the Road to Indy TV app or on Rev TV up in Canada or, of course, on the race YouTube channel internationally as well. It's a gorgeous day here, a little warm, a little muggy, but it is time to fire up these drivers for a second race at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Kyle Kirkwood again starting on the front row alongside David Malukas. That run to turn number one will be exciting. And folks, now time to get things underway down here on pit lane. 12 drivers ready to flick the ignition and fire these cars up as we are about set to go. Joining me, of course, down here on pit lane to give me the command to fire here today from the Bomberito Automotive Group. Tom Bomberito will join me. And again, just waiting for those final times to click off as we get set to go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to fire up these engines. Let's pass it over to Tom and the command to fire. Thank you. On behalf of the Bomberito Automotive Group and Bomberito.com, where Price sells cars, welcome to Worldwide Technology Raceway and the Indy Light Series. Gentlemen, start your engines. And with that, engines coming to life, ladies and gentlemen, I'll send it back up to Nick Yeoman in the IndyCar Radio Network.
race here. Going to be interesting to watch it unfold, especially with the break at lap 35. Not only are they going to get new right sides, but they'll top off the fuel, and that'll make the last 35 laps, I think, a pretty cool shootout. For yeah, the race Dave, tonight. Davey with, uh, with race control and Indy Lights, you know, making the decision to, to stop this one at halfway to give those drivers an opportunity to put on fresh sets of Cooper tires, at least on the right side. Uh, I would imagine that opens it up for these drivers to be super aggressive for these two segments. Yeah, you know, and one thing is be alive for the first one, correct? I mean, just make sure you hold your pace, don't do anything wrong, make sure you're there for that second half. You're going to get a different set of tires. Your car's probably going to handle a little different, but don't make a mistake of that first one because you're going to start all over the second one. Just make sure you're in contention. Let's check in with our two pit reporters who uh, are going to see some rare, albeit not very live, pit stops. We'll start it with Ryan Marine. Well, that definitely will change things up for us on pit lane. No question about that. But I'm really excited and happy for Linus Lundquist, who had the big crash yesterday that necessitated the team getting a spare chassis ready for him to race. They did that. He was out in warm-up earlier this afternoon. And he was relatively fast, has a decent starting position uh, inside the top five, starting in the fifth spot and looking for a big bounce back here today after the disappointment and the hard hit just one day ago. Set to go racing at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Kyle Kirkwood, your pole sitter. David Malukatu is outside. They'll bring him down slowly and see the green flag and accelerate towards turn number one. Kirkwood moves left and right to try to hold on to that top spot. Maluka slides into second, and it looks like Mark Benjamin Peterson on the outside grabs third. Uh, Benjamin Peterson does grab third. It was a strong run into turn number one, but your pole sitter holds serve now with David Malukas in tow as they set up for turn number three. Kirkwood Lucas Peterson, good battle for the fourth position as we see Linus Lundquist on the outside, usually orange and black. It's a backup car for the HMD Global Racing Group, and Mark, he's going to grab that fourth spot away from Daniel Frost into one. Daniel Frost tries to tiptoe to the high side, a little bit further back. We see Robert McGinnis on the move. He's trying to pick up a couple of spots. Strong move to the high side. He started shotgun on the field, Nick Yeoman, and he's already picked up a couple of spots. Yeah, McGinnis moves into seventh around Toby Sowery, and it's out Alex Peroni, who's looking really racy, right behind Sowry through turns three and four. Peroni moves that car up to the outside groove, trying to get a nice run down the front straightaway. They snake their way across the start finish line. Peroni is going to take a pop to the outside of Toby Sowry into turn number one. Again, looking for the eighth spot. Sowry has it stuck to the bottom of the racetrack, and as a result, he's going to be able to hold on to that advantage. Sowry is going to try to pull up on McGinnis now. This is the battle for the seventh position. McGinnis has it. Sowry wants it into turn number three. Into the third corner. Everything's trying to settle into a race pace, albeit with uh, just 35 lap segments. We expect these drivers to be ultra aggressive. Up front, Kyle Kirkwood grabbed the race lead right at the start of the event. He's run away from David Malukas by about four or five car lengths. And then Benjamin Peterson giving that third place car a good run. Mark James down the back straight away. Yeah, uh, Malukas not able to shake loose from Peterson just yet. It's about two tenths of a second. Meanwhile, Kirkwood is open it up the four tenths of a second. As we say that, but Lucas gets a very strong run of a turn number four. Down the front straightaway across the start finish line to start lap number four. Malukas pulls to the inside. Thought about taking a look to the inside of, uh, of our poor race leader, Kyle Kirkwood. Thinks better of it. Has to check up, get out of the throttle, and just like the accordion mark, here comes Benjamin Peterson. 11th point back in the battle for the championship is David Malukas. He is trying to track down Kyle Kirkwood not only in the battle for the points championship, but also with a race lead. They're nose to tail at the start finish line. Davey Hamilton, the pace pretty strong for the front three here in the opening laps. Not surprising at all, especially with Kirkwood and Malukas, but Pedersen, what a great run for him. As you said, these three pretty much checking out right now. Lundquist doing a good job, too, in that fourth position after having to, a backup car that he hasn't had much time in. Actually, just to practice a little bit earlier today. Good run for him as well, but how about McGinnis? He, he's picked up five positions since the start of this race. I think he may have a little something right now just falling into a nice race space, but that second 35, he may be a contender. Yep, Robert McGinnis uh, finished in the seventh spot yesterday. Front three into turns number one and two, and then about a 10 to 15 car length deficit back to fourth place running Linus Lundquist, who is one of our championship contenders as we welcome Rob Howden into the broadcast. And uh, Rob, let's kind of detail the last 24 hours for Linus Lundquist, the driver from Sweden. Yeah, you talk about Linus Lundquist coming in here. It's the first time in two years since we've had an oval race yesterday, of course, uh, with the Indy Lights program having the hiatus in 20. 
2020. Uh, and that, of course, made him a little behind the eight ball. Now, I will say one thing about them. Over the last couple of weeks, they have been here. Uh, HMD Motorsports and Global Racing Group, a new team with Global coming in, getting the one extra test day. They elected to use that test day here at Worldwide Technology Raceway, getting two test days last week when every other team only had the one. They focused on this particular race being the race that could be that kind of you know, cornerstone turning point race in the season. You can see how good they're doing right now. But Nick, as you said, Linus Lundquist had a pretty good run, looked strong in his oval debut, had a good run in third. And then, of course, that incident up into turn number three when that uh, tire let go and he ended up going up into the wall. That tire was actually degrading earlier. He stayed out probably a little too long, ended up in the wall. And, of course, the team working hard last night, diagnosing the damage was uh, unfixable here at the racetrack on the tub, ended up pulling the number 59 car out. That was a car that was driven by Nikita last get all year and so he and get and then got into the car in the warm-up nick and first time in the race car at speed here at worldwide technology raceway had a pretty solid session and i gotta say running p3 right now after that incident yesterday really impressive for that young swede yeah certainly uh flying by the seat of his pants to a degree davy hamilton you ever been in that type of situation where you got to jump into a race car that you're not very familiar with at last second well you know i did i do have one quick story when we were in las vegas one year and i was with gallus racing and we were running for the championship uh that year and that was a final final race and and I, our primary car, I just couldn't get it right. It just didn't feel good. So I said, you know, we have nothing to lose. Let's go to the backup car because this one is not going to get the job done. So we went to the backup car, uh, started the back of the field because we qualified the primary, went to the backup. And, and when we started that race, you know, I was able to call in and say, well, I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is there's nothing wrong with that first car because this was just as bad as it. So, so uh, we actually had a, we actually had a good run that day. The car was actually really good at end of long runs, and we had a, a pretty respectable finish. Uh, but anyways, it, it's, you do get positions because that was the first time I made laps in that car. And and these crews and these teams are so good to get the cars identical to where they were before and and, and have the same setups and know exactly where all the measurements are supposed to be. And obviously they did that for uh, for Lundquist. Working lap number 12 of 70 here at Worldwide Technology Raceway. It's Kirkwood, Malukas, Peterson, Lundquist, and Daniel Frost, the top five. Let's go back to pit lane and Rob Howe. Yeah, just to add another little note on Linus Lundquist, I think that when he came into the program, Nick obviously had a tremendous run last year in the Formula Regional Americas Championship, dominating the action, winning 13 of 15 races, I believe. So he came in here with such a pedigree, and everybody wanted to see what he was going to be able to do. Of course, a race win in the opening weekend at Barber Motorsports Park, and people said, hey, this guy's the real deal. To see what he's done, Nick, in this debut weekend on an oval, having never driven it, didn't come through the road to Indy, didn't run USF 2000, Indy Pro at the Carb Night Classic at Lucas Oil Raceway. He's never been on an oval before, just the testing with the team. And to be as quick as he has been and has just shown so well on this racetrack, I got to believe that his value in the IndyCar paddock going up and up. Yep, and certainly uh, in terms of this championship, needs to do a little damage control today because entered this race 45 points behind Kirkwood, 43 behind Malukas in the championship. He's doing a nice job, Lundquist, in that fourth spot, about 2.3 seconds behind. Mark Jesus, take a little uh, look back a little bit further. It's the battle for eighth position. Toby Sowery has it in that Hunkos Hollinger car, but the Carlin racing machine of Alex Peroni from Australia hounding him through turns one and two. Cambridge, England, the hometown of uh, Toby Salary, and uh, they have been hooked together nose to tail for about the last five laps. Again, this is the battle for the eighth position. A really good run by Peroni off of turn number four. He's able to close that gap down to about a half a car length now. He is right in the tire tracks as Toby Salary trying to hold on to that eighth position. That green and white car sets up for turn number one. Peroni uses that draft down the front straightaway to keep pace within about a car length or two as they make their way through turns one and two. It looks like Sowery moves down to the middle of the back straight away. Not much to, to break the draft, but more to set up that entry into turn number three. And the gap uh, remains at about two or three car lengths as they hit the apex of three and four. Stingray Rob was in that battle for a while, but he has since faded. He is about eight tenths of a second behind that battle, currently running in the tenth position. That battle heats up into turn number one. It's for the eighth position. It's Toby Sowery. Peroni, their nose to tail at the exit of turn two. Davey really looks like uh, Peroni's trying to set up Toby Sowery, but boy, it is tough to make passes here at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Yeah, it sure is, but right now, the number 11 car, Sir Valley, slowing down the front straightaway. Looks like he's going to make it to the end of pit wall, or is he in pit lane? Yeah, well, he went by, but it looks like we're probably going to get a yellow out. 
Um, yeah, this is interesting. He had issues yesterday. He was one of the drivers that had a right front issue, and when he slowly made his way down the front straightaway, he kind of pulled right to the pit exit lane. But as you mentioned, Davey, he has uh, made his way all the way around turns one and two very slowly, creeping at maybe 30 or 40 miles per hour while the rest of these drivers are out there doing 150 mark. It looks like he's now to the middle point of the back straightaway, but that car still seems to be under power. Yeah, it's uh, not under much power as the field starts to scream by him now about the mid point of the back straightaway he's got a little bit of work to do before he can kind of coax that thing into the penetry lane he makes it there now the question is is that car under power enough he is for now out of harm's way but it is crawling ever so slowly toward turn number four and it looks like yes he is indeed uh, Sarah Valley is going to be able to milk that thing back to pit road and keep the caution from coming out here on lap number 19. He had a sixth place finish at Road America. This is his first year in Indy Lights, and Antonio Saravalli has fallen all the way to the tail end of the field, and uh, Rob Howden, he is slowly making his way down pit lane. Yeah, Nick, I'm standing by with the team right now. Talking to Mark Moore, the former Indy Lights team owner, they hired Mark to come on as the engineer for this weekend, and they've been very happy with the speed that they've seen out of Saravalli his first time here on the Oval. Being told a drive line issue, nothing to do with the tires whatsoever, although the Cooper tire guys are actually going to get an opportunity to look at a tire here mid-run. That's good to see, but having a quick chat here with Saravalli. Just some kind of a drive line issue, didn't have full power. I'll try to get you a further update in a little bit of time. Yeah, he rolled slowly to a stop in that pit box, and the team kind of gingerly made their way over to the race car. So uh, there was definitely something wrong with that machine for, uh, again, Antonio Saravalli problems in on here. Lap number 16, he has fallen behind four laps. Mark, let's pick up that battle for eighth. The kid, it's a good one. Sowry and Peroni side by side down the front straightaway. Yeah, Peroni looks inside and wants to grab the spot, but Toby Sowry's being a little stingy. He widens the elbows out a little bit, but that car really starts to wash up to the high side. He has to gather it back in, and Dick Yeoman give Peroni the spot. He goes to the eighth position as Sowry got to the high side and just could not hang on had to lift a little bit and lost a ton of momentum absolutely earned it that driver for carlin racing bloodstone the sponsorship on that machine for the australian alex peroni and now Sowry will fall back into the clutches of his teammate stingray rob for Humco's hollinger racing a new partnership davy hamilton uh, cool to see that Humco's racing along with hollinger gonna go full-time indycar series racing in 2022 it's really starting next race at portland speed or portland oregon then on to long uh, laguna seca then long beach so they start full-time really the next one but it'd be a full-time effort for next year great to see that great to see uh, ricardo have a team uh, partner come in to make sure that they're back in indycar racing full-time Big question, who's going to be in that driver's seat? I know they've been testing already, got a few guys in mind. Uh, Kyle Kaiser comes to the top of the list, means he's been in that camp before. Is he going to be the guy or not? Yep, should be interesting, but uh, really good to see that organization expanding and, again, going full-time IndyCar Series racing next year. Up front, it is Kyle Kirkwood, the driver from Jupiter, Florida, who has led all 24 laps here at Worldwide Technology Raceway. He is not really getting away from David Malukas. His advantage into turn number three is about five or six car lengths, and it's Benjamin Peterson about five or six car lengths behind them. Mark James, they make their way down the front straightaway. Uh, those three have been locked together like magnets here for the first 24. Five laps. Uh, fascinating to me, Nick Gilman, to think just how dominant the perception is. Kyle Kirkwood has been the dominant driver this year, but uh, somebody forgot to tell David Malukas uh, about that. I mean, David has really heated up of late. Good to see them back in full song, and much like the NTT IndyCar Series, Nick, going to be fun to watch this championship battle unfold as Kyle Kirkwood roars down the main straightaway with some floor cars in front of him. Yep, that is Christian Bogle who is going to stay to the outside. Kirkwood's going to sweep to the inside. Bogle quickly slides right back in front of uh, David Malukas to make their way down the back straightaway. Mark navigating lap traffic. It's one of these things these young drivers have to learn to do. Uh, David Malukas is next to put that car of Sarah Valley behind him and uh, I guess Peterson's the big loser. He's going to have to try to pass him on the high side. That's a pretty bold move, Nick Gilman off of turn number four. Obviously plenty of grip in those two Cooper tires as they get toward that lap 35 mark. Yeah, that was impressive. Benjamin Peterson uh, kind of kept his foot in the throttle around the outside and uh, Davey got around Christian Bogle. It appears that that third place car has some grip and has some horsepower. Yeah, you know one thing they did was it's all about timing and he, even though it was on the outside, timing was pretty good for all three of those guys and, and so 
that is the key on ovals. I watched earlier with Peroni trying to pass Sauri. He just, the timing wasn't right, wasn't right. He finally got the timing right and learned how to make that pass. Once you learn how to do it on these ovals and know where you can pass, where you need to be fast or not, it's a big, big help. 42 laps to go here at Worldwide Technology Raceway. This is round 14 of this 20-round championship as we are going to uh, decide an Indy Lights champion here over the next several months, a doubleheader in Portland. And these drivers get a chance to go out to Laguna Seca, and they will end the season with a doubleheader at Mid-Ohio. It's been a ferocious championship battle all year long between Kyle Kirkwood, David Malukas, and Linus Lundquist. Those three drivers have won all 13 races. It has been ultra competitive, though. And up front, Kyle Kirkwood's advantage over David Malukas is about a half a second. Here's a look at the full field rundown as we are closing in on that halfway break, that caution and red flag that will allow these drivers to change tires. It's Kirkwood, your race leader. Malukas by now just uh, three-tenths of a second, closest to within three car lengths in turns one and two. Benjamin Peterson runs in the third spot. Fourth is Lundquist. Fifth is Frost. Devlin DeFrancesco has the sixth spot. Robert McGinnis is seventh. Eighth is Alex Peroni. Toby Sowry is ninth. Stingray Rob is tenth. Christian Bogle is eleventh, one lap down. And Antonio Saravalli in the final position. He is 13 laps down. And Mark Jaynes, don't look now. We've got a battle for the lead. Kirkwood moves to the inside to try to defend. But check that. We have got a yellow flag here with 39 laps to go. Uh, he was coming. Yeah, he sure. was. No question about that. He had gone to the high side in turn number one and was going to make the pass. And uh, just about that time, the yellow flag flew in the hands of the starter, Aaron Likens. And just like that, David Malukas will try to have to regroup gather it back in and hopefully can make the pass on Kirkwood once they get past that lap 35 mark after they get those uh, uh, fresh tires on the right sides and get that thing packed full of fuel. So I can only assume that that is what this yellow flag is for. I don't see uh, any issues for drivers. Haven't really heard any reports of uh, debris out of the racetrack, so must be stopping them a couple laps early to count these laps under yellow. But uh, again, it is Kirkwood, Malukas, Peterson, your top three. Those three had been getting away just a little bit. Uh, Linus Lundquist was safely in the fourth position. Daniel Frost in fifth. Devlin DeFrancesco in sixth. Robert McGinnis, seventh. Alex Peroni, eighth. Toby Sowery, ninth. Stingray Rob, tenth. Christian Bogle, eleventh. And Antonio Saravalli in twelfth, Mark. Uh, Davey, uh, last time I remember something similar to this as they're getting ready to go red. And, of course, this is a bit different scenario. I think it was a lights race at Toronto in which we were going from the wets to the dries. And if I remember right, Andretti Autosport at the time brought their IndyCar crews out and uh, handled the pit stops for the Indy Lights and uh, gave them quite an advantage and a lot of their guys gained some valuable track position. This is a different scenario, but that's kind of the last time I remembered anything close to a pit stop in an Indy Lights race. Yeah, that's right. They're just not equipped to do pit stops for several reasons. Number one, just financially, it takes a lot of people. It takes more equipment to, to make pit stops. And so this is the feeder system to the Indy cars. So they do not make them. But this one, it would be they just have X amount of time to change the tires, they will come out and start in, this, in the same position that they ended yep. in. Although uh, Malukas, he really wanted, he, he was almost there to uh, to be leading the next stint. But right now they're coming in, they're going to stop. They'll be green on lap 35 when they come back out. Yep, there you go. So uh, the field of 11 now with Saravalli out of the race, slowly making their way down pit lane. Again, this will be uh, a chance for these drivers. They, can, they will all change right side tires and put fuel in those cars. But uh, Rob Houghton, if anyone wants to elect uh, to take left side tires or work on those race cars, they will go to the back of the field. Is that correct? Indeed, that is correct, Nick. Just the uh, the left, the right side tires. They scuffed them in this morning during that warm-up session. I don't know that you're going to see anybody go for a full set of tires all around, but they definitely cannot work on their cars at all. Standing by here right now with Linus Lundquist of that number 26 machine, that Global Racing Group car. They're going to go to work at getting those outside tires changed. A quick walk down here to David Malukas as well. They'll go to work here on the machine of Malukas. Uh, we'll give you an update as well. But yeah, just right now, tires, we'll go to fuel and then uh, press the reset button and go back at it once again. 
It's kind of like a halftime break, Mark. You know, I mean, uh, you've yeah. done sp- various sports before. Uh, is- I, I'm anxious to, to, to see, you know, Rob, you've got a bird's eye view right th- down there on pit road. I mean, any noticeable signs of wear on any of those right sides that they're taking off? I mean, um, do you see uh, that, that over the course of the last 30 laps or so that uh, there's a noticeable change in those tires? No, to be honest, having a look, and I'm actually right here with uh, – uh, one of the Cooper Tire executives, one of their engineers looking around. Tires look good. I talked to the Cooper Tire engineer after they looked at the tire as well. Midway through that stint for uh, Antonio Saravalli said tires look good. They continue to have a look at them right now, but nothing that I see, Mark, any out of the ordinary, which is pretty solid, Ryan. Yeah, I'm seeing the same thing. I'm down here in the Andretti camp. They've got the number 28 car of the race leader, Kyle Kirkwood, jacked up. They're looking at the front of the car right now, and they're starting to do those tire changes. They can't adjust air pressure without incurring any penalty, but other than that, as you guys have noted, it's basically a no-go to do any kind of adjustments to the race cars unless you want to lose your track position. So that does open up the possibility perhaps for those running towards the back that don't have a whole lot to lose. Maybe they do go ahead and change all four tires. And uh, that might be a chance for them to make some headway in the second half of the race. So, again, uh, we are at the halftime break, so to speak, of this Indy Lights race presented by Cooper Tires, round 14 of this 20-race championship. And, again, Davey, this being done purely out of uh, – out of in the name of safety, basically, yeah. yesterday in, in race number one, had a couple drivers have problems with right front tires, and rather than uh, risk these drivers and these race cars getting torn up, uh, I think we're all in agreement this is the good call to make. Yeah, absolutely a great call to make. Now, one thing that's a little disappointing is tire management is really key for all motorsports, and it's always good to see the, the, who's taking care of their tires and who could come maybe from behind to the front towards the end of the race. Well, these these tires are going to be good the whole way. So, you know, I don't think there's going to be a big change in the front of this or any any positions within the race. Other than Malukas was coming. Now, was he coming? Uh, had a little bit of spe- just to try to get it at the end, or or does he? Uh, is it was he just uh, a little lucky to make that run? Let's go back to pit lane and Rob Howden. Yeah, just one of the things they can do, guys, is change tire pressure. That's the only thing they can do uh, to the entire car as well. Even though they're not changing the inside tires or the, the left side tires, they can change the tire pressure if they want. One other adjustment that was made, actually, a bit of a repair. You can't work on the race cars whatsoever, but David Malukas was having an issue with his radio. They were able to get that radio plugged back in, so he did not have the spotter calling down to him. Now they've got that repaired. They will be back to spotter driver communication for David Malukas. Uh, and you better believe, Davey, if, uh, if David Malukas wants to get up on the wheel and, and try to make a pass, uh, spotter communication is uh, is key if they're going to go wheel-to-wheel around Yeah, this you know, track. and the great thing with that is you, that's safety. That's not a performance advantage whatsoever. You always have to do it safety first. So when a radio comes unplugged or something happens, it's always the best, especially in a situation like this, not to penalize them, to let the race continue as it's supposed to be, but just make it safer for everybody. So as we wait to uh, see those drivers fire those engines for the second half of this race, let's talk a little bit about the main event tonight, the Bomberito Automotive Group 500. Live coverage here on IndyCar Radio coming your way 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central Time. Mark James, you'll be on the call of that event. And uh, how about Will Power? Uh, Mario Andretti, the all-time pole leader in IndyCar history with 67, and Will Power gets number 63, and he didn't hide from the fact. I like it that he said, yeah, I, I want that record. I'm going for it. Yeah, uh, both he and Colton Herta will start on the front row. And interesting to note that uh, both of them felt as though they made uh, mistakes in qualifying that would have resulted in better laps. Uh, uh, Team Pesky flexing a little muscle here at Worldwide Technology Raceway. They have three of the top four starting spots with Joseph Newgarden and Simon Pagino in Row number two. A couple of the drivers that struggled in qualifying include uh, Renus VK and Ed Carpenter. Uh, Tony Kanan, probably not real happy with his starting spot. He'll roll off in the 18th position. Interesting to note, Alex Pillow leads by 21 points, Nick. He'll roll off in the 12th. Well, he qualified in the 12th position. He'll roll off uh, in the 21st position because of that engine change resulting in that nine-grid penalty. So, Davey Hamilton, your points leader, has a lot of work to do uh, to keep that 21-point lead uh, once he leaves Worldwide Technology Raceway tonight. Yeah, he sure does. And you never know what an oval is going to bring you. We have so many different packages with downforce and aero. And, and we have a different tire now. Last The last time we were here, you know, they were kind of just – you know, spread out equally around the whole racetrack and everybody's running like the same speed. 
with the tire that's supposedly going to wear out a little quicker, which means lose grip faster in the run, it could be an exciting race, and it could be a guy like Pelot with a good balance to come towards the front of this field. Uh, let's uh, go back to pit lane and check in once again with Ryan Marine. Yeah, just quickly wanted to put a bow on the Antonio Saravalli story. He will finish 12th. He is done for the day, and the culprit evidently is a broken axle. So his day ends even before the halfway mark. Yep, out of the race after just 17 laps. And, uh, again, didn't have a very good run yesterday uh, either when he was one of the drivers that uh, was, was caught by the right front tire issues. Rob Howden, uh, the Indy Light Series, not the only Road to Indy Series that's been in action. Update us a little bit about some of the other junior series that have been racing here in, outside of St. Louis. Well, we had Indy Pro 2000 on the schedule as well. The drivers in USF 2000 don't get back racing again off this Olympic break until next week at New Jersey Motorsports Park. But Indy Pro 2000 was out for a 55-lap race, and it really came down to the two primary championship contenders, Braden Eves and Christian Rasmussen, and ironically, the last two USF 2000 champions as well. Well, those drivers uh, battling it out. Uh, Braden Eves able to get by James Rowe Jr. on the opening lap with a good move down in, inside of three. He took the lead and led flag the flag, but not after Christian Rasmussen started seventh, powered around the outside over the first couple of laps and found himself into P2. Uh, really strong run for Rasmussen. With an event like this, we've talked about the difference in points here in Indy Lights and Indy Pro. 45 points for the win, points and a half for these oval races. Starting back in seventh, Rasmussen could have seen his championship lead uh, diminish quite a bit with a, a, a win from Eves, but instead him coming back to second kind of limited the damage a little bit, but a big win for Braden Eves, of course. It's been a while since his uh, victory in the opening round at Barber Motorsports Park. So for Braden Eves, that win will give him Nick some momentum heading to next weekend. New Jersey Motorsports Park, triple header for USF 2000, triple header for uh, Indy Pro 2000 as well. Just two races and uh, two events and five races left of the championship for both of those the rungs of the road to Indy. Remember, a lot of money up for grabs. Scholarship for USF 2000 to go Indy Pro. That's worth over 380000 over 750 grand available for the Indy Pro 2000 champion to move to Indy Lights and an Indy car test at the end of the year for the top three here in Indy Lights and the champion in Indy Pro. Lots on the line when we get to mid-Ohio in October. And the reality is Davey Hamilton with the uh, landscape growing and looking a little bit more healthy every year with the IndyCar Series. We expect there to be opportunities for some of these lights drivers as a lot of teams are expanding throughout the IndyCar paddock. Yeah, we, we hear that all the time, and they keep track. You know, Colton Herta, Pato Ward, so many drivers have have graduated out of Indy Lights into the IndyCar. We have a couple, you know, some great guys that are wanting that scholarship. Um, Kirkwood leading the points. Uh, that's a nice little start to get your uh, seat in the IndyCar Series. And and I rumor, not you know, just a little bit of rumor that he may stay right with that Andretti team, slide into one of the Indy cars, uh, and and hopefully be a full time driver there. Malukas obviously wants to be there as well. Think that he may have a little bit of help, sponsorship wise, financially to get in an Indy car. And there's there's seats, but not a lot. But it's a lot of a uh, lot of guessing right now. This, of course, the Indy Light Series presented by Cooper Tires on IndyCar Radio. Live from Worldwide Technology Raceway, it's the Indy Lights Oval Challenge of St. Louis. And uh, Mark James, nice to see a lot of fans starting to fill in the grandstands. What a weekend, of course, not just yeah. open-wheel racing, but last night fans got to watch the uh, the Camping World Truck Series of NASCAR in action. Of course, that's coming off a, a great weekend we had at, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway where NASCAR's top two rungs along with IndyCar were in action. These, these weekends where there's a lot of bang for the buck, I think we're starting to see people are noticing and, and taking advantage of these fantastic opportunities to see racing. Uh, well, this commitment all began with the title spots the Bobberino Automotive Group and a great, a great relationship with them and the folks at Worldwide Technology Raceway. And, Nick, we remember when uh, this venue first returned to the NTT IndyCar Series schedule throughout the course of that first season leading up to their first race. There were folks from the Bobberino Automotive Group at Worldwide Technology Raceway. They were literally at every racetrack all season long taking notes, paying attention to who was doing what. I mean, this organization is about as active as any on social media for sure. Uh, and, and throughout the course of the season, if it has wheels and a motor, <laughs> chances are at some point it runs during the year at Worldwide Technology Raceway, just behind the grandstand. If you've never been there, folks, uh, the drag strip and, uh, boy, I'll tell you, uh, the, the thing – a lot of people bemoaned the fact it was hard to get in and out the first year when the NTT IndyCar Series was here because of, uh, you know, the, the fan response and how many people showed up. And uh, they went to work right away. 
and uh, looked at their traffic patterns and changed them the next year. And uh, each and every year, they do a post-mortem on the event, and they find a way to improve the fan amenities. And uh, hats off to them on another job well done. I don't think I will ever get over the first year we were there. I was working down on pit lane, and the pyrotechnics we saw on the back straightaway yeah. on the final or, or one yeah. of the final couple parade laps during the IndyCar race uh, it, it looked like a nuclear bomb went off. I don't know how much they spent, but it was mighty, mighty impressive. But you're right. Everything that they do uh, from the promotion standpoint to the operation standpoint continues to get better and better. And that's why this has become uh, one of these race weekends that uh, race fans throughout the Midwest have started circling on the calendar. Lots of opportunities to see uh, not only top-level series like the IndyCar series, but the future stars of NASCAR and the truck series, future stars of IndyCar and the road to Indy. It is uh, it has really been impressive what uh, all the folks have done at Worldwide Technology Raceway. We're starting to see drivers uh, have their cars pushed back in line. Ryan Marine, that tells me we're getting a little bit closer to starting up the second half of this Indy Lights race. That's right. So the order has been established and the work has been accomplished, it appears, on just about every car up and down the pit lane. So now they're just making sure everyone's in the correct order in the fast lane here in the pits, and we'll be sending them back out here shortly. But I did want to touch on those pyrotechnics because I had somebody from the organizational side tell me yesterday that they've actually doubled it for uh, for the race tonight. Wait. Yes. Well, now what? that is good news. <laughs> How is that possible? That's what I asked, and uh, I was assured that it's going to be spectacular, so be on the lookout. Uh, it already was spectacular. <laughs> got something to look forward to. No, wow. if, if, uh, I'll find the pictures, and I'll, I'll tweet them out a little bit later before the IndyCar race. It, it was unbelievable. So uh, that is that is cool. There's something to look forward to and something that the fans there at Worldwide Technology are going to uh, to look forward to as well. Mark Jaynes, as far as uh, as the schedule goes, not just for the Road Dandy, but for the IndyCar Series, uh, you know, this is it for the Midwest. It's a three-race West Coast swing to crown a champion and uh, some very technical and tricky racetracks ahead for the IndyCar boys. Well, there's no question they're going to get a little time, a little space to breathe, a little space to regroup, if you will. And again, some drivers probably going to be doing a lot of negotiating as the engines come back to life now for the second half of this race and trying to get their future secured for 2022 as quickly as possible. But, uh, boy, three challenging venues to close out the season. Portland International Raceway, uh, WeatherTech Raceway in beautiful Laguna Seca, and then the fabulous streets of Long Beach. So uh, look forward to a spirited battle for the championship. Tonight, I think, will go a long way, Davey Hamilton. Don't you to telling us whether Alex Pillow is set up to weather the storm of the veterans at Pottawa Ward who are chasing him. Yeah, we're going to find out. I mean, he needs to have a great run tonight to just manage the point situation. He lost so many last week at Indianapolis Road Course where he had an engine failure. The only car, I think, out of the race, actually, for that uh, for that event. So lost a, a load of points. He needs, as a matter of fact, over half the point lead that he had. So if that was to happen again, he would, wouldn't be leading the points after such a large lead. So definitely needs a good, good run. And, and as you guys are talking about the fireworks, I've, I've been in some races where they shoot them fireworks off the in the back straightaway. And I... I wish I would have known because it's not it, it, it definitely gets your heart really going not not that you're not you don't have your heart rate up getting ready for the start of a race but when those things go off it scares scares you pretty uh pretty seriously so you might want to tell the drivers to be, be prepared I, I'm sure the veterans are uh, are well aware but you're right guys like Robot Grosjean and Scott McLaughlin here for the first time I hope uh, somebody told them again we talked about that West Coast swing Indy Lights will be with the IndyCar series uh, at Portland and at uh, Laguna Seca and then of course the uh, Indy Lights series will wrap their season up at Mid-Ohio set to go racing once again here with 35 laps to go here in round number 14 of this Indy Lights Championship, it is Kyle Kirkwood, your points leader, who has led every lap so far. But, boy, right before that stage break, if you want to call it that, David Malukas was putting the pressure on. Malukas is going to line up in second. Then it's Benjamin Peterson third. Linus Lundquist in fourth. Daniel Frost in fifth. Devlin DeFrancesco in sixth. Rest of the top ten, Robert McGinnis, Alex Peroni, Toby Sowry, and Stingray Rob. Out of turn four, Kyle Kirkwood accelerates as we are 
back to racing at Worldwide Technology Raceway in the Indy, Indy Light Series presented by Cooper Tires. Malukas right in the tire tracks of Kirkwood as they make their way into turn number one, Mark James. Uh, a little bit further back, definitely DeFrancesco was starting to make some moves. He wanted to work on Daniel Frost and uh, the 27 machine of Robert McGinnis. He continues to do well on starts and restarts. He went to the high side, and I think he might have picked up a couple of more spots. Meanwhile, it's all Kyle Kirkwood off at of turn number four. Battle for the fourth position as Daniel Frost gets shoved way up high as he tried to go the long way around Linus Lundquist, and now he's got a challenge behind him. Devil D. Francesco in that yellow and red car pops to the outside. They go side by side into turn one. D. Francesco certainly liking those new Cooper tires that he has on that race car. Getting a lot of grip to the high side. He'll have to settle in right now for position number six, trying to chase down Daniel Frost into turn number three. Those are Andretti Autosport teammates. In fact, the car right behind them, Robert McGinnis, makes an, an, an Andretti Autosport trio with the fourth car being your race leader, Kyle Kirkwood, across the start-finish line. Again, it's the battle for the fifth position. Daniel Frost by two car lengths over Devlin D. Francesco. He pulls away from him just a little bit now at the exit of turn number two. That's a line of four cars now. It's Frost, D. Francesco, Robert McGinnis, and Peroni. McGinnis is plus five, Nick Yeoman, on a track that typically doesn't involve that much passing, but clearly he's had a strong race car after starting shotgun on the field. Yeah, yesterday in qualifying, McGinnis had problems, but we've got a battle for the lead. David Malukas takes a look to the outside of Kyle Kirkwood. Mark, he's trying to make that outside group work. And that's right where he attempted to make the pass and was going to make the pass before the yellow flag came out. He goes back to the high side, and that car is stuck. They're side by side in the entrance of turn number three. Malukas on the outside, Kirkwood on the bottom. They're playing nice, giving each other plenty of room to the apex of three and four. They'll close up, still wheel to wheel down the front straightaway. Maluk is trying to force Kirkwood low into turn one. Car is really working well to the high side. That red and black 79 machine. Kyle Kirkwood is not giving an inch, though. They're stuck together. Bottom of the racetrack. They almost touch at the exit of turn number two. They top two in the championship going wheel to wheel. Maluk is a little more horsepower down the back straightaway. Trying to clear Kyle Kirkwood. Not able to do it through the entrance of turn number three. They stay wheel to wheel out of turn number four, still side by side headed to the start finish line. Bottom line, it is taking a longer way around the racetrack. Kyle Kirkwood knows that. The interested spectator is Peterson behind him. Kirkwood's got a bit of an advantage though, but as we say that in the exit of turn number two, he comes storming back. He's not left much room to the high side. He gathered it back in and he might make the pass into turn number three. He is trying to squeeze his way in front of Kirkwood in turn three and he might have got it done. David Malukas goes the long way around, being pinched the corner exit, but he finds Finally completes the pass. Davey Hamilton, that was one whale of a battle here in St. Louis. I tell you what, hats off to Lucas. What a great run. I mean, he just kept sticking it on that outside and giving plenty of room to Kirkwood. He wasn't trying to pinch him down. I mean, what a gentleman racer, and boy, did he pull off a great, great pass right there. Hats off to him. That was, that was picture perfect right there. Davey, this series is designed to train drivers to get them ready to race an IndyCar. What I saw right there were two drivers that are ready. That was uh, sportsmanlike, competitive, fierce, and ultimately a, a tremendous battle. Absolutely tremendous battle, and that's what it's all about right there. And if we see Malukas right now, he's still kind of running that high line, still, still likes it. But I'll tell you how impressive was that. But just... Coming off of turn two, I mean, he had no room between Kirkwood, no room between the wall, but he kept on the gas, slid through there, and had the momentum to get that lead into turn three. With 28 laps to go, Rob Howden, after David Malukas took the lead, he has stretched it out to six tenths of a second over Kyle Kirkwood. Well, I'll tell you this right now. I had a chance to, of course, interview David Malukas on the podium after that win yesterday, and he straight said to me, thinking back to that major wreck that he had at the Freedom 100 when he and Chris Windham got together at the very start of that race, that huge wreck that really affected him mentally throughout the end of the season. It took him to the end of the season really to kind of get over that and get back in his game. He said yesterday that victory being able to do what he did here at Worldwide Technology Raceway, erase all that bad karma from the event at uh, at Indianapolis. It was his first win on a road course in the road Indy competition. And you can see, we talk all the time, Nick, about the confidence drivers get, the momentum they have when they start winning races. For a young kid like this, still a teenager, David Malukas, to win yesterday, giving him the confidence in his race car here today.
And Mark changed the, the confidence to have it on the outside. I mean, that got as close as you can get, especially out there in turn number two, where it seems like it funnels out of that final corner. Well, and I mean, he had the width of the car, and that was about it in that HMD machine coming off of turn number two, and uh, a lot of faith in that car. And fortunately, the track had not dirtied up much to the point there was still plenty of grip up there. And more importantly, Nick Yeoman, with that pass, that puts him now three points to the good. P1 in the battle for the championship if he's able to hold on over the last 25 laps. Yep, it just uh, seems like this is how it's been all season long. These two drivers uh, are, are nearly even every single week. David Malukas takes the lead here in Indy Lights competition here with 24 laps to go. His advantage, about five or six car lengths. I'll tell you what, Mark, Kyle Kirkwood's not letting him get away, and Kirkwood's done a nice job of stretching it out from third place running Benjamin Peterson, who looked like was going to join this battle. Well, Peterson and even Linus Lundquist have entertained thoughts of making that a four-car battle, but yeah, they, they have lost that lead pack for sure. Lundquist is not able to keep pace either. He is about a second, full second behind Peterson, and then, of course, uh, two seconds back to fifth place running Daniel Frost, DeFrancesco, McGinnis, uh, Perotti, and Salary, Stingray Rob complete the top ten, and uh, we are uh, down to 23 laps to go now with the lead from Malukas off of turn number three down of four tenths of a second. And the reality is Davey Hamilton now the opportunity for Kyle Kirkwood to kind of watch David Malukas study that line and see if he can track him back down here with his mark mentioned 22 to go. Yeah in the line that I, if I'm watching lines and being around this track a lot you'd think the line that Kirkwood has is actually faster and better than Malukas but right now Malukas made that outside line work. He made he made the pass for the lead with that line now he's kind of still hanging out there right now where we see Kirkwood more on the bottom, more of the standard line on the racetrack. But uh, they're running basically identical times. As a matter of fact, last lap, 28.55 to 28.45. Uh, a tenth of a second, or uh, one hundredth of a second, basically. And so they're, they're running the same speed right now. Can Kirkwood get in that draft and try to return that favor? Davey, would either one of those drivers abuse those Cooper tires more than the other when they went side by side for two or three laps there? I really don't think so. And if anyone got abused a little bit, it was probably Kirkwood having to make that tighter radius on the bottom of the racetrack where Malukas was out on the outside, really freeing that car up. And we've seen when he squoze between the wall and Kirkwood and had that little extra momentum, that little extra speed to be able to finally clear him down into turn three. The little easier in your tires, the wider line you take. Problem is sometimes they're just not grip out there. Yep, Kirkwood was searching for some grip and turns one and two here on lap number 50 as that car wiggled just a little bit right in the middle of turns one and two. He's right there at about two tenths of a second behind down the front straightaway. In fact, he's got a nice run. He's about a car length behind Mark James as they head into turn number one. Uh, four tenths of a second last time by, and it's down to three tenths of a second. And as I say that, it's down to two tenths of a second. No question, Kyle Kirkwood is getting off the corner a little bit faster. And they're not quite nose to tail, but the gap is closing into turn number three. And they are getting smaller and smaller out of the uh, the windshield, windshield, I should say, the visor of Benjamin Peterson, who runs in the third position. Problems, it looks like, for Stingray Rob, for whom Coast Hollinger racing. He is slowly bringing that navy red and white car to pit lane. He was running in the 10th position, and uh, it looks like he is going to fall a lap down. Meanwhile, leaders down the back straightaway with 18 laps to go. The advantage for David Malukas is, uh, again, a safe but maybe not uh, overly confident three car lengths as they make their way through turns three and four. Again, Malukas and Kirkwood, one and two. Benjamin Peterson runs third. Linus Lundquist has settled into the fourth position. Daniel Frost is all by himself in fifth with Devlin DeFrancesco about a half a second behind in the sixth position. Then it's Robert McGinnis in seventh. Eighth is Alex Peroni. Ninth, Toby Sowery. Tenth is Stingray Robb, who sits on pit lane. He will lose that tenth position momentarily as Christian Bogle, who is also one lap down, is still out on the racetrack, and Bogle does take over that 10th position, kicking Stingray Rob back to 11th. Antonio Saravalli, the only driver out of the race in the 12th position. Just 16 laps to go, and Mark James, we've got two cars side by side. Devil and Francesco looking for fifth on the bottom. Been closing on Daniel Frost for about the last four laps. He shaved him from about four tenths of a second down to two tenths of, tenths of a second. He was able to make the pass at the start finish line, so shuffle him up to the fifth position. Got a ways to go to catch Linus Lundquist. Don't know if he's got enough time left with 16 laps to go. But anyway, 
pass for position. Good run for him. He's working on a top five. Uh, let's go to Rob Howden, who has an update on Stingray Rob. Indeed, guys. Stingray Rob coming in. Of course, the Cooper Tire crew going to look, complaining about a vibration, wondering whether or not it was that tire, those left side tires. Indeed, though, the rear tire on the right side of the car actually rotated on the wheel a little bit, causing a bit of a vibration. Probably happened when he lit up the tires to leave the uh, pit lane, so they put a new tire on that right rear Stingray Rob down and away back out on track. Battle for the seventh position. They're going wheel to wheel. Alex Peroni on the outside, Robert McGinnis on the inside, Mark Jane's out of four. Robert McGinnis again has had a good day. He started dead last, and uh, he is plus six on the day, looking to go plus seven, and uh, it looks like Peroni's not going to be able to get it. He makes the pass at turn number one, and Robert McGinnis in that 27 machine uh, is uh, enjoying a ever-growing advantage, but as we say that, they start to step for turn number three. There goes Peroni to the bottom. Oh, he's going to pull the slide job, and it's going to work. To the inside, he slides right up in front of Robert McGinnis, and he takes over that spot. Both of those drivers moved up a spot because Daniel Frost has come to pit lane, but that battle's not over, Mark. Robert McGinnis back to the outside. Battle for the sixth spot, and McGinnis goes to the high side, but it looks like he lost a little bit of group, uh, grip. He's trying to gather it back in, and he lifts big time going to to turn number three because there's a caution on the course with 12 laps to go. Yeah, everybody will lift out of the gas and let this uh, these fans breathe a little bit with 12 laps to go as we have gone yellow for debris. Rob Howden, you're down on pit lane and saw the pit stop for Daniel Frost. Yeah, Frost bringing number 68 dead jet machine in here. Looks like an issue with that right front tire again that Cooper Tire guys will have to look at it. Again, just what? how many laps left? Interesting to see that happen to Daniel Frost, an issue that we had yesterday coming back up here today yeah he got passed by Devlin De Francesco and uh, De Francesco kind of just just left him and, and clearly there was an issue there for Daniel Frost but Davey Hamilton I'll tell you what I mean we, we saw the battling up front when we went back to green but throughout the pack really impressed with these Indy Lights drivers getting up on the wheel and running side by side around worldwide technology race well here's the exciting part we have an IndyCar race coming up right after this and they can do anything like these drivers are doing in the Indy Lights series. It's going to be outstanding because they, what racing? I haven't seen side-by-side -side racing for so many laps in a row out of these guys for a long, long time. But as Rob said, we've been uh, it's been two years since they've been on Oval. And boy, what an exciting time and exciting racing to watch these guys uh, battle it out. Uh, this is my plea, Mark, to Dan Anderson. Hey, maybe a couple more ovals. If we could just find a way, give these drivers an opportunity. I know it's a, it's a learning series designed to, to get these drivers up uh, up and ready to go for ovals, but this has been a lot of fun. Uh, well, there's no question, and uh, Rob Howden, uh, on, on top of that, uh, maybe, you know, a little added drama with this late caution and also that uh, stoppage at the halfway point. And uh, I'll tell you what, Rob, we're taking a look at some of the tires that are coming off of these race cars. We didn't see any issues at the halfway point but we're seeing some now. Yeah, that's the one we've seen so far. The other drivers I've seen come in uh, earlier, like uh, Stingray Rob, that tire on his right front was fine. This one here, as you can see, the damage on the inside of the tire. Just to add to the point that you brought, yeah, we're going to have a good little finish here at the end with about 10, maybe 9 or 10 to go when we go back to green. You talk about having more oval racing. Iowa got announced uh, for the NTT IndyCar Series. I can't tell you how many Indy Lights drivers and Indy Pro drivers I talked to in the road to Indy Paddock this weekend begging and pleading to go to Iowa. They want to get to that bad, fast racetrack. Yep, nothing official, of course. Uh, Indy Lights will announce their uh, their schedule for 2022 uh, later in the off season. But, uh, boy, we're going to go two races in IndyCar, Mark. Let's add two Indy Lights races there, too, because uh, we know how good of a show that, that that racetrack in Newton, Iowa could put on. Haven't those been 100 lappers in the past? Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, and, I mean, that's, that's, that's a test for sure. Speaking of a test, a test for David Malukas and Kyle Kirkwood. Well, we're getting a, a report that we are going to see the white flag oh, as the drivers come out of turn number four. So this one may be in the books, very similar. And we can see the uh, HMD Global Racing Group. They are celebrating down on pit lane. It looks like Davey Hamilton, much like yesterday. This one going to be called a little short of the advertised distance. Yeah, un unreal, you know, but I mean, it happens. It happens. You have to do it for safety. These, you know, these drivers have to stay safe. These cars need to stay together. Unfortunate, 
but what a great race. I don't know if the outcome would have been any different. It's unfortunate, I'm going to say, for Frost. He was the one that had the tire issue, had to come in, lost a lot of ground running in that fifth position. So unfortunate for Frost, but uh, but good front run for Malukas. Another win, Kirkwood and Pet Peterson and Lundquist, uh, the top four. Yeah, David, you're a race car driver. I'm guessing if you ask uh, David Malukas, he's going to say, yeah, Kyle Kirkwood wasn't going to get me. And if you ask <laughs> Kyle Kirkwood, he's going to say, yeah, I would have probably got him if I would have got the yeah, chance. Yeah, oh, yeah. We, we've we've had that discussion many, many times as racing drivers. But at the end of the day, you always ask who has the check and the trophy. That's who won. So it doesn't matter how would have, could have, and should have. Malukas is a double winner here at St. Louis. Yep, so no doubt, kind of uh, disappointing how this has all kind of played out, but uh, regardless, the racing has been really good, and David Malukas has flat-out earned these pair of victories. He'll come across the start-finish line, and David Malukas has swept the Indy Lights Oval Challenge of St. Louis. He scores his sixth race win of the season. He'll pick up the victory with Kyle Kirkwood finishing second, Benjamin Peterson finishing third. That was what your podium looked like yesterday, and they do it again today. And with the win, David Malukas takes over the points lead. Davey Hamilton, uh, he now has a three-point advantage over Kyle Kirkwood. And those two starting to stretch it out on Linus Lundquist, who's going to end this weekend 59 points behind. Well, they're not going to make they're, – they're not comfortable, either one of them, knowing that they could win the championship or lose it by such a small margin – but you're right. They have a, they're the ones to watch right now. They have a nice little lead over Lundqvist with that 59 points. Um, it's going to be a battle at the end of these guys, Nick. I mean, it's going to be exciting to watch the rest of the season, Portland being the next one up for them. And uh, we'll see. Road courses right now, it seems Kirkwood has a bit of an advantage, but we'll have to just wait and see. Yeah, six races to go, and I don't think it'll surprise anyone if those two drivers split the final six and, uh, and both end the year with nine victories. Uh, boy, this championship battle has been a lot of fun as these two young American drivers, again, Malukas from Chicago, Illinois, Kyle Kirkwood from Jupiter, Florida, uh, both seem poised for IndyCar as they have flat dominated this season. Here's a final look at your finishing order. This one ends up a little short of the 70 laps that were uh, originally scheduled. It is 62 laps. David Malukas picks up the race win, again, his sixth of this season. Kyle Kirkwood, his second. Benjamin Peterson comes home in third. Linus Lundquist is fourth. Devlin DeFrancesco, fifth. Alex Peroni will get a sixth-place finish. Robert McGinnis comes home in seventh. Toby Sowry is eighth. Christian Bogle, one lap nine, one lap down, I should say, uh, finishes in the ninth position. Daniel Frost had tire issues there at the end. He ends up two laps down in the tenth position. Stingray Rob also had issues, five laps down, finishing in eleventh. And then Antonio Saravalli, the only driver to officially retire from today's race after 17 laps, mechanical issues for him. Uh, ends him with a 12th place finish. And Mark Jaynes, we see a very excited Robert McGinnis hopping out of that race car. We're going to hear from him very soon. You've caught a lot of IndyCar races over the last couple of years. This young man seems as poised and as talented as we have seen. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, uh, what what a year that uh, David Malukas is putting together. And uh, it's going to be a memorable battle to the championship between he and Kyle Kirkwood. And uh, what a weekend it's been for him. And, uh, you know, he, he earned it, that's for sure. I mean, he tracked down Kyle Kirkwood. Would finally made the pass. He would have made the pass before that uh, the mid race break, no question about it. Uh, that car was just absolutely hooked up. And uh, I tell you, it's been a while since I have seen a driver in an Indy Lights car pedal one around here the way he did on the high side of that side by side battle with Kyle Kirkwood. Yep, they kept it fair, they kept it clean. Unfortunately for Kyle Kirkwood, though, Ryan Marine, he comes up on the short end. Pair of seconds this weekend for Kyle Kirkwood. Kyle, this one ends a little bit earlier than anticipated. Had we gone the scheduled distance, though, did you have anything? Do you think you could have challenged for the lead? Uh, there was a lot of factors there that I think would have uh, allowed us to win there. I don't, I don't know why, but they were a bit quicker than us in a straight line, which I don't know why that adds up. We were kind of just scratching our heads, um, which the reason why I'm able to follow so close but not make a pass on him, but he's able to follow from a distance and make runs on me. So it's uh, uh, we're all scratching our heads right now, but um, I think we had a better race car as the race was as the race progressed. We were getting faster and faster. I was able to run them down. I actually backed off there like a lap or two before that that caution there um, to just try and get some clean air and figure out what the groove is. And then I was going to run them back, run them back down and try and get a run on them, especially when we we're catching lap traffic. I had to deal with lap traffic on our on our first little uh, stage, if you will, there. 
and then and then the second second run, I mean, they went they went to caution right as the as he caught traffic, which I think is pretty unfortunate for us. I mean, there's a lot of circumstances that just kept us from winning this weekend, and um, there's a few of them in that race. Well, you put on a show for us, and we thank you for that. That's Kyle Kirkwood who comes home P2. Now to Victory Lane and Rob Howden. Thank you, Ryan. Standing by here with David Malukas. What a huge weekend for you to come in here and get a couple of victories. Massive. Let's talk about how much momentum you got from the confidence from yesterday to run the outside like you did today around those laps there. That was unbelievable. Side by side, you had the fans standing on, uh, in their grandstands. Yeah, uh, thank you to Kyle for giving a good show there. I mean, even for me, I mean, we were going up, and on the exit of two and four, I was in the seat. I was like, oh, we're getting tight here. And uh, But, oh, man, it was a good race. Thank you to Kyle once again. Um, he, he forced me to do that high line, and we knew that was going to happen. We knew we had the pace to, to get around him, and we knew once we get in front, it'll be the same thing as yesterday. So in the warm-up this morning, I was just doing high line, high line, high line, practicing, setting the car up for that high line. And I mean, it showed off in the race there. Was well, there a sense of urgency at the start of that second segment for you to go to the front early? Or did you think about maybe settling in and, and trying to go late in the run? Yeah, so in that first bit, I actually had no radio, so I couldn't communicate at all with my spotter. I had no idea what's going on. And in an oval, I mean, you don't have much time to look around. So I kind of calmed down. I looked at his lines, looked at when he went high, looked at when he went low, and where we were quick. And uh, I knew setting it up on the exit of two, going to three and four, I could get a run. I waited for the new tires, got the radio back on, and I, I put it on on the second, sec second section. A strong start to the season for you then. Of course, Kirkwood comes in midway through, wins five of six races. How important is it winning these two races here? Big points on the oval. You take the point lead back by just a couple of margins before we go to Portland. Just how big is this? I mean, this is huge. This was the one. It, it all it kind of, to keep the, the, the score close there, this was the one that we really needed, and I was really nervous going into it because ovals, I never really had good luck, and now we just came in with a, a double win, so I'm, I'm happy. The points are great. This is going to be great for, I mean, going in, in, as like a show for IndyCar, so yeah, I'm happy. David, congratulations. Thank you. David Malukas from HMD Motorsports getting the victory here today. Back-to-back -back wins on the oval here at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Another solid finish. The driver coming home in third spot, standing by with Ryan Marine. And that would